All rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin... Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgive you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this festival of Pentecost and also celebrating confirmation is from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy. Son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, 
and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from the graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading, Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. This is what was uttered to the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord.
In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm still pondering, dear confirmands, our little conversation last night, impromptu, about what your favorite Bible story is. Remember? It was impromptu because I, I didn't have it planned and it was quite interesting. I don't remember who specified what, but I think, I mean, when at least one was David and Goliath. Who did that, remember? You did. <laughs> and Daniel and the lion's den, I think there are two. Weren't there two? Just Allison. And the three men in the fiery furnace. You remember that, Hallie? Then I think I said... Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and there was somebody else that what struck me though somebody else did a New Testament one who did that remember I don't remember who it was but the majority I mean those who said were Old Testament stories and I pondered a bit I mean David and Goliath, I mean, you just think of that story, this youngest of all the sons, this runt. And Goliath, you know, you look at the Bible commentaries, maybe he was nine feet tall. So this little, ruddy little boy, and what is he to do with such a giant? But remember... Goliath was making fun of the God of Israel. And David could be so bold, so courageous. Who are you to defy the living God? And remember, it's one of the most humorous parts of the Bible. Remember when they tried to give him the coat of armor and it's too heavy for him? He didn't need the armor of man. He had the armor of God. And he made confession of the living God without fear, without worry, without trembling, without shaking knees. And he took his slingshot and the first pebble, round pebble, pebble hit Goliath right in the middle of the forehead and he dropped like a load of bricks. That's a favorite story. Or the fiery furnace. Again, temptation to de deny God, the true God. And they throw them in the fiery furnace and they make it hotter and hotter and hotter. And then there's another person who shows up and it's believed and it is Jesus Christ. Before he took on permanent flesh and blood. And they came out of the, the hot fire without one smell of smoke on their garments. That took courage. That took boldness. From where did it come? I mean, what are you to believe today? And there I approach it. Do you wear masks? Do you not wear masks? Do you get vaccines or you don't get vaccines? Do you spatially distance? Do you get a vaccine and still wear a mask? I guess I already went there. But what do you believe? There are scientists here and scientists there. And people don't know what to believe and they're paralyzed, at least some. And that's the intention of the devil too. He wants you to not to doubt if there is a God, if there really was a man, Jesus Christ, who is truly God. Tomorrow morning, I'm teaching a study on Islam. They believe that Jesus was just like Moses, a good prophet, but not God, and he, didn't really, he wasn't really crucified on the cross. 
But every religion outside of Christianity tries to remove Jesus. Because according to the Bible, Jesus is the core. He's the centering focus. And that's what the Holy Spirit's work is all about. The Holy Spirit has been given to you, confirmants. You've been baptized. And he's the spirit of comfort. And what does that mean? He gives you Jesus. He comforts you with the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. And he's the spirit of of truth. According to one website, there's at least 12 major religions in the world. Which is right? Only Christianity. Because Jesus is true God and true man, and from him and the Father proceed the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, is the spirit of comfort and the spirit of truth. As you go into your high school years and as you grow up and get bigger and bigger and older and older, you'll never grow out of this need, the need of the forgiveness of your sins. You'll never grow out of that need. And the Holy Spirit is inside of you, and the Holy Spirit is working through the Word to keep giving you Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth which makes you certain and bold and confident that there is no other God but the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you need not be afraid or arrogant overconfident but humble and pious and faithful as boys and girls and you'll grow up to be moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas and I just think of that young little girl in 2 Kings 5 a youth she was a prisoner of war and she took the risk to tell her master of the true prophet in Israel could heal his leprosy. She could have had her life taken. But she wasn't scared. She simply confessed. People today are more confused than ever at just the sound of a rustling leaf they quiver because they have no foundation you've been given a foundation you've been given the instruction of the holy and sacred scriptures and these scriptures through the Holy Spirit's power, have convinced you without all doubt that Jesus Christ is Lord and your God. Listen to St. Paul, how he confesses with humility, strength, and courage, even as he faces the nearness of death in 2 Timothy. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. You own that same confidence by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all your understanding will keep your hearts and minds in your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand and pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
for gladness in the Holy Spirit who fills the world with the remembrance of everything Christ Jesus has spoken. Let us pray to the Lord. For hope in the midst of this world of death and despair, that God would put his spirit within us and our confirmands to believe, to live and to serve according to his promises and commands, and that he would lead our homes to confess confidence in his power to raise the dead, now and at the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. For the help and salvation of all, especially Elaine Dorr, Catherine Hartwig, Lonnie Grothus, Jason Abramowski, George Naim, Sue Halsey, Joel Knudsen, John Kaufman, Carol Lindquist, Joan Prenschke, and those who we name in our hearts at this moment. That the Spirit would renew the face of the earth, look with favor on his creatures, and fill the hearts of the faithful kindling in them the fire of his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Barb Hari, Ray and Arlene Eichstadt, Scott and Ashley Winter, as they celebrate another anniversary year, blessed by your Holy Spirit and filled with your love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your Son, you promised your Holy Spirit who would convince the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Enlighten our hearts that we may confess our sins, obtain everlasting righteousness through faith in Christ, and through every trial and temptation, abide in the consolation that Christ is Lord over the devil, death, and all things, and that he will graciously deliver us from all affliction to make us partakers of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Have the confirmation students rise, please. 
Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You've been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you've been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion on the, at the day of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Easton Lee Beaudry, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Isaiah 43, verse 1b, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine.
Hamden Michael Bennett, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your Bible verse, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. Allison Jean Jeffries. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your Bible verse, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Bryce Leon Keckler, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. Psalm 119, verse 165. Riley Joe Knutson. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you Wherever you go, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Ellie Rose Linehan, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Hallie Christine Schmitzer, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit 
and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Kyle Robbie Smith, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Samantha Lucille Strufert, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. We love because he first loved us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Sophie Elizabeth Wicklin, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8, verse 12. Emerson Grace Willard, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Revelation chapter 2 Verse 10. We stand for prayer. Almighty, most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with the faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan 
and preserve them from the false and dangerous doctrines that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in Him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear the cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive Renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. You alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he is betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
may be seated. Blessed Pentecost Day and also confirmation. Great to have you confirmands before us and hear us here as you confess Jesus to the whole world. It has to be God's greatest pleasure to have his children confess him as Savior and Lord. I mean, isn't that true? It's got to be. It's just got to make his heart pound. And thank you, families, for coming and supporting these confirmands, how great that is. Keep them in your daily prayers from now on and watch them grow up. If they begin to stray from church, bring them home. Bring them home. That would be marvelous, marvelous. We're going to have pictures family by family. Uh, and I, Carrie Smith will tell us about that or lead us in that. I also want to give a special thank you to Carrie Smith and to Matt Schmitzer. You know, when the Lord surprised us and promoted Pastor Volk way too early, in the end of January, and Pastor Volk was leading our confirmands, and the Lord had a different timing than what we had planned, of course, but Matt Schmitzer and Carrie Smith, they just jumped right in and kept the ball rolling and taught these confirmands the Lord's word. So let's give them a hand, please. Okay, Carrie will come forth and guide you for the pictures. The Lord's peace be with you.